Um, today I'm at my dear Lada, Alban Lada, and um, a lot of people have asked if I could do the front end of the deer that I did last week. So obviously this is a different deer, but I'm going to do front end butchery. Now, important to say this is how I butcher deer, it's not necessarily how you butcher deer, but it's a good way of doing it, and possibly a little bit different. So, once again, we've got everything set up, we've got trays ready for the meat, I've got my hands all clean, I've got my sleeve protectors on, these are really good, by the way, these disposable things for stuffing muck on your forearms. Nice bowl of hot soapy water. A cup of tea, very important in England. And I'm gonna make a start. So we've sawed off, you saw last week, I've sawed off the flanks here, the ribs, the neck and the shoulders. And now I'm gonna take apart. Here, come and have a look at this. So I'm going in the first rib, if you have a look in here, first rib there. I'm going to follow that all the way, likewise that. And that's the point at which we cut with our bone saw. That is lovely. There is separated our saddle, which is this bit here. Now this fallow deer is in really good condition. It's a bit bigger than the one I did last week. Still got some fat on it. Interesting at this time of year, in uh, the end of March, the, the deer are in different stages. Some of them have done really well, some less well, but they're all beautiful. So I'm cutting the flanks off here. These are amazing, amazing for um, stewing or grinding. And I'm probably going to use these for grind, so I'm going to put them there. Now let's trim up our saddle. So come and have a look. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take the knife you see it's been beautifully skinned here, um, tiger stripes are still on it. I'm going underneath here and I'm going to, as carefully as I can, take off all of this sinew. Yeah, next bit here. silver off. That's nice. So we just work our way along, removing the skin, the silver. Now this will grind quite well and what I've started doing is any sinewy bits that, you know, because um, I'm not making restaurant stocks at the moment, I'm taking all this sinewy bits and I'm doing a single grind and I'm using it for organic natural dog food. So literally nothing is wasted. Um, so the sinew, the real third class bits, we grind them up and my dogs, there's one there now, hello Sorrel, are being fed this every morning and they're looking very well on it. Fantastic, okay, so I'm gonna do some pretty mighty double chops now. So I start off in between the vertebrae. If you have a bandsaw, you don't even have to worry about them the gaps between the vertebrae, you can just chill it and zoom it straight through. These double chops though, we call these Barnsley chops in Britain. They're a, they're a traditional lamb cut and they're amazing with a smaller deer. Look at that, lovely double chop. Next one, straight down the gap between the vertebrae, there and there. Yeah, the best way to do this, put the saw in, put your hand over it, can't cut yourself. Nice clean strokes to the saw. Like so. Cut, bingo. Lovely way to use a saddle, amazing grilled. You get the sirloin, have a look in here. If you come in, here's the sirloin, here's the true fillet sirloin true fillet so we get like a double t-bone that would be a t-bone there to there great so all of our lovely double chops are done one of them's always a bit thicker at the back end than the others that's the mighty one for the hungry one in the family but they do look gorgeous you see we've got six of these beautiful double chops off here um, if you've got a bandsaw and you're not going between the notches in the spine then you can make them all exactly the same thickness you could always use a domestic bandsaw if you've got one in your garage. Just put a brand new blade on it, clean it really, really well, make sure you've got enough gap. Zing, really efficient way of doing things. 
Next, I'm going to count the bones on my ribs, so I'm going to go in pairs, two, four, six, eight, ten, and I'm going to cut this here and here, cut it off, lovely. This here at the front of the fillet, I'm going to take these off here and I'm going to do a couple of lovely little steaks out of it. Remove these neck fillets. These actually, you can slow cook them like shoulder of beef, but the best thing for these really is to make like braise. So these make your prime dice. It's wonderful meat for, for dicing and, uh, and making stews and chilies and things like that. There's two beautiful fat lumps of neck meat for dicing, which I'll put here with my dicing tray. And then I will work my way through here, removing every scrap of meat and going between every rib. The next part of really prime, here we've got our sort of prime saddle, okay? And I want my double chops. So what I'm gonna do is, is find the point along the inside here where the intercostal muscles, where the muscles, the, the ribs, you look at the ribs as they move when you breathe and etc. Each of those ribs has a socket and the way to do that, and it's not easy to do, you need a bone saw, but what you need to do is make a cut and feel it bite and then you know you're in the right spot. Lovely. Don't go too deep or you'll cut into the fillet. Now what should happen, if I push, ah, now have a look. You see all those rib joints have popped. That's what we want. And then we're gonna go along where they've popped in that little socket there and just work our way. And then the joints will stick out and then we can get in Just you, there's one being awkward just here. Got it. I'm gonna work my way along. There we go. Very little meat remaining. Then you'd repeat on the other side. And now we can cut those lovely double chops. So what I'm gonna do is go along where the eye of the meat is here. and just take off the bulk of it. Leave those lovely little bits of muscle between the ribs. So we're not gonna French trim. That is a beautiful piece of meat. And if you don't wanna just chop it up, what you can do is roll these breasts like so. Tie them, put some lovely herb butter on the inside, and then you can put these in a backpack back and cook them sous vide, cook them for 12, 14 hours at 75 degrees they'll go super, super tender, the fat will render out, then you can quick roast them and carve them, and they're delicious. So I'm gonna put them in my good pot. Let's cut these babies into double chops. So we go down here, come and have a look. We're gonna go down straight between the joint. And there's our lovely double chop. Number two. Okay, so I'm gonna go through there. Double chop, double chop. If you want to trim them up more, you can, but I love all this. All this is absolutely delicious on the, on the chop, and those are fabulous on your barbecue. They don't look amazing when they've just been cut because like chefs like me in restaurants would probably trim all these bones up so they're white and beautiful, so that when they're cooked, they give a lovely white bone down into the chop. But for home use, honestly, this is delicious. You see here we've got our, our ribs. If you want to remove the ribs, you just run the knife down the inside of each bone like that, just a millimeter or so, like so. And then what you can do, is get your knife, slide it under there, break at the bottom and it will break at the joint. Slide your knife under, down to the bottom, break, and you can twist or cut it out.
I'm going to work my way along this and then uh, this again is one of those amazing joints that we can roll up with lovely, I mean, my recommendation is uh, garlic, rosemary, olive oil, lemon zest, pepper, whizzed up in a blender till it's a sludge and then we paint it on this and then we roll it up. You can either cut into sections and roll it that way or you can cut it this way. Tie it with string, sous vide it, slow cook it, roast it in a hot oven, mm, carve it into slices. Right, I'm going to carry on with this and then we're going to get on with shoulders.